some of the most bizarre customs of royals. Throughout history, the peculiar customs of royalty have ranged from the peculiar to the downright bizarre, from sharing their sleeping quarters with holy relics to employing peculiar methods to detect poison. The habits of monarchs have been a source of fascination. In an era where paranoia about poisoning was rampant, Henry VIII went to extreme lengths to ensure his safety. Each morning, attendants were required to kiss every inch of his bed linen to certify that it was poison-free. This ritual extended beyond food testing, reflecting a broad affair of toxins penetrating the skin, which was also noted by a doctor during the 16th century. Henry VIII's concerns about poisoning extended to his son, Edward, for whom even clothing was not exempt from suspicion. New garments were subjected to rigorous testing, either through direct contact with servant skin or by dressing a boy of Edward's size and monitoring for adverse reactions. Even the most innocuous items, such as the chamber pot cushion, underwent scrutiny before being used by the young prince. Elizabeth I, known as the Virgin Queen, avoided the risks associated with childbirth and pregnancy complications. Her most notable health setback occurred in 1562 at the age of 29, when she contracted a severe case of smallpox, leaving her skin scarred. Unaware of the potential dangers, her attempts to conceal the damage may have inadvertently compromised her health. During this period, achieving a flawless complexion held deeper significance than mere aesthetics. Blemishes were interpreted as signs of divine disapproval or inner turmoil, with some attributing them to lewd thoughts manifesting on the face. Remedies for smallpox scars included a concoction of terpentine, beeswax and shockingly human fat, sometimes acquired directly from executioners. While it remains uncertain if Elizabeth ever resorted to such extreme measures, she did adopt a ceruse foundation following her smallpox recovery. This makeup compromising white lead ore, vinegar and occasionally arsenic hydroxide and carbonate, mass her scars and imparted a luminous silvery complexion when applied over egg whites. To introduce a hint of colour to her lead and arsenic base, Queen Elizabeth used vermilion, a powdered form of cinnabar containing mercury, on her cheeks and lips. In essence, her daily routine involved layering her face with a cocktail of toxic substances. In the latter part of the 3rd century AD, Rome boasted an impressive network of aqueducts supplying numerous public fountains and bathhouses. However, in AD 537, the invasion of Goths disrupted the system, leading to challenges in maintaining bathing facilities. The early Catholic Church managing Rome amidst this turmoil lacked the expertise to repair the aqueducts and consequently discouraged bathing, viewing it as a sinful indulgence associated with pagan practices. Over time, medical beliefs further reinforced the aversion to bathing, with many individuals seeking astrological guidance to determine the safest time for cleansing rituals. A popular 16th century health manual cautioned against excessive bathing, warning that it opened up the body's pores, allowing harmful air to contaminate the blood. Queen Isabella of Spain proudly claimed to have bathed only twice in her lifetime, while Queen Elizabeth I reportedly limited her baths to once a month, regardless of necessity. Her successor, James VI, harboured a strong distaste for bathing, reportedly avoiding it altogether. Courtiers even suffered from lice infestations after frequenting areas that the king visited. James's aversion extended to basic hygiene practices as he merely wiped his fingers with a damp napkin before meals. In one letter, his lover, the Duke of Buckingham, humorously acknowledged the king's disregard for cleanliness by affectionately kissing his dirty hands. In bygone eras, doctors often procured human body parts known as mummia from town executioners. This practice stemmed from the belief that remnants of the life force persisted in the deceased, particularly in cases of sudden death, 
such as executions or accidents involving young, healthy individuals. Ingesting these body parts was thought to extend one's natural lifespan by absorbing the residual vitality. Historical records indicate that several monarchs, including Charles II and William II of England, Francois I of France and Christian IV of Denmark, resorted to cannibalistic practices for medicinal purposes. Although there is no direct evidence of Elizabeth I engaging in such practices, two of her esteemed royal physicians reportedly advocated it for their other patients. Furthermore, when James I of England suffered from gout in 1616, his doctor, Theodore, prescribed an arthritic powder containing scrapings from an unburied human skull, along with herbs, white wine and whey, to be consumed at the full moon. However, considering the king's aversion to consuming human flesh, Mayen suggested substituting an ox's head in this case. The Spanish monarchy integrated religious practices into their medical treatments, often resorting to elaborate rituals involving prayer, fasting, confession and acts of charity in hopes of divine intervention for the sick. It was believed that demonstrating piety in this manner would garner favour from God and potentially lead to miraculous healing. Taking this belief to extraordinary lengths, the Spanish royal family, known for their veneration of saints, adopted a peculiar tradition. During times of serious illness, doctors would retrieve body parts or even entire corpses of revered saints from churches and monasteries. These sacred relics were then placed in bed alongside the ailing member of the royal family. One can only envision the scene of a delicate young princess awakening from feverish dreams to find a saint's skull or other remains lying beside her. 